creator of relational life therapy. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Hello, you gorgeous and sexy creature. Welcome to Practice Intimacy. This is the place to be to learn all about love, sex, and how to have the best relationships you possibly can. So, what we're going to talk about are the fiery couples who get in lots of fights. Fights can look like anything. Some fights are really, really bad where we're shouting uh, basically emotional violence at each other or throwing things or even like getting physically aggressive with each other. That's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is just like the little bickering, naggy, back and forth stuff. I really do think of it as like bickering and it does not feel good and both partners or all partners are tense and uncomfortable as they're just going back and forth at each other. Usually with like, uh, this thing did not feel good to me, can we talk about it? And then this thing that we're trying to talk about turns into, well, you did this and you said that, but you did this and you said that. Ugh, not fun. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, so we're gonna discuss a way that you could stop those interactions and hopefully do something else in the future. What has to happen first though is stopping the interaction. Like there is no moving past the step of just getting out of the fights. For every single couple who comes to see me and their number one issue that they're wanting to work on is we just don't wanna have bickering or angry conflict anymore. What I'm gonna suggest is a tool, a skill called timeouts. What a timeout is, is you're going to call a timeout on yourself, and that's very important. You do not call a timeout on your partner. You call a timeout on yourself when you notice that you're emotionally activated. Often people wait too long. They wait until it's like a big blow up and then they call the timeout. But I actually think as soon as you can catch yourself upset, call the timeout. That way you can take space, calm down, come back a little bit more emotionally regulated and try again. The person who I learned this particular way of doing timeouts from is Terry Real. He is the creator of relational life ther ther huh. 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 Oh. <laughs> He is the creator of relational life therapy, which is a fantastic model for doing couples therapy. If you are a couple looking for a therapist, check out RLT, relational life therapy. Um, there's a directory of people who've gone through Terry's training and they often have a great model that they're working from and so they would do pretty good therapy. But I learned this way of doing timeouts from Terry Real, and I love it. I think it's really useful, but it also requires first an agreement so that when you go to do this, you and your partner are on the same page. And then after agreeing to doing this, then it just requires practice, doing it over and over and over again until it becomes like a natural thing you do. And so, yeah, that, that's the two things that it requires in order to start doing the timeouts. What a timeout looks like is, the moment I noticed I'm emotionally reactive, and it might be that I'm noticing my partner's emotionally reactive and I'm feeling myself rising to meet them and so I'm gonna call a timeout, totally fine. Or it might be that I'm just emotionally reactive and I need to go, oh, I need a timeout. You can agree on exactly what you say. You could say, I need a timeout. You could go like this. And when you say or do the movement that tells your partner that you've agreed on, I'm taking a timeout, what it means is, I love you. I'm losing my cool and I'm afraid I'm gonna say or do something that I will later regret. So I'm going to take a pause and calm myself down and come back whenever I'm emotionally regulated. That's all the things that you're saying when you do this or say, I need a timeout. You're saying, I love you. I can't do this. I'm gonna lose it. Give me a moment. And then once you call the timeout, the way Terry has it set up is there's certain amounts of time that you spend away before coming back. Whoever calls the timeout is the one who comes back after the allotted amount of time. And so the first amount of time is 20 minutes. I'm gonna call a timeout, I'm gonna go for 20 minutes. Ideally, it would be somewhere in the house or in the space together, or like if you're trapped together in the car, then you're trapped together in the car and 
if you can pull over and go for a walk, great. If not, then 20 minutes of silence or turning on music or something. Just 20 minutes where you go away from each other and you do not talk about what happened. And in those 20 minutes, here's the most important part. You're not trying to come up with all the things that you're gonna to say to your partner to try and convince them how you're right or tell them what they did wrong, no. You're not thinking about the argument that you're going to go back to. Instead, what you're doing is trying to calm yourself down. Go for a walk, do yoga, drink some cool water, take a cold shower, um, go play with one of your animals if you have pets. Anything you can do to calm your nervous system down so that whenever you come back to your partner, things are chill between you. And what Terry says is when you come back from a timeout, you first thank the person, thank you, I appreciate that we took space, and then you don't talk about it for the rest of the evening, you just focus on being kind and connected, and then you bring it up the next day. And again, just like the person who called the timeout, they're the one who comes back after 20 minutes, they're the one who brings it up the next day. Here's the next piece. If you call a timeout and you're not calm within 20 minutes and you come back, the next step would be saying, hey, I'm not calm yet. Now I need an hour. So every time you come back, if you're not calm, it's doubling, almost doubling. It's a little more than doubling in this case, doubling the amount of time that you're gonna take apart. So you would come back and say, I'm not calm yet, I need an hour. And so then you would go and do something for an hour. And if you come back and you're still not calm, I'm still not good, I need two hours. Go and do something, four hours, eight hours. Going over eight hours, I would not suggest. Um, if it's that long, if you're gone for like four hours to eight hours, tell your partner where you're going. And by this point, you would have had enough touch-ins where they know like, okay, it's just that the timeout's getting longer. They're still coming back. It's been 20 minutes you checked in. It's been an hour you checked in. It's been two hours you checked in. Now it's been four hours and you've checked in. And now you're saying, I'm gonna go stay with my sister at her house. And so being really clear about here's what's going on is important. A timeout is not just avoiding the situation and running away. It's not the same thing as a timeout. A timeout is being really honest and clear with your partner about, I'm taking space, I will be back. So, the important pieces, let me just list them again. I always call a timeout on myself, I never call a timeout on another person, ever. It's not gonna work, it's not good for you, always call the timeout on you. Take 20 minutes initially, and then if you need more time, double it. Double it each time that you need to continue that break and keep taking space. But always come back and update your partner on I'm not ready yet. If the argument happened that night, leave the rest of the night to just relax and reconnect and then bring up what happened again the next day. And then the final piece, this is more about the agreement space. Whoever calls the timeout, they are then gonna be the ones who come back. Whoever has the timeout called, not on them, but whoever's the receiver of the timeout, cannot follow, cannot try and keep the argument going. They need to respect the timeout. They need to stop and honor the agreement, if they made the agreement, to give their partner space and self-soothe. And ideally, in that amount of time, they're gonna be doing self-soothing too. Hopefully they're going to use the opportunity to also take a time out for themselves and try and calm down, try and emotionally regulate. Okay, I really hope this is helpful. This is one of the best skills I know of when it comes to stopping bickering fights, stopping big blow up fights, especially if there's something that happened consistently. If you're trying to stop the process of being in conflict with your partner, this is the number one skill to practice. And so make an agreement with your person or people around using timeouts and let me know how it goes. Also, come up with a plan for how you're going to self-soothe. I love that part. Think of what you're going to do to help yourself calm down, not wind yourself up or think about here's how I'm going to come back to this argument. No, calm yourself down. Leave me comments below. I would love to hear what it's like as you're practicing the timeout, what it's 
like to figure out the self-soothing plan. And if you're running into any bumps, like if you're having trouble getting this, leave me comments. I check those all the time. I will respond to you. And I'd love to help you figure out how to do this process. So write to me, write to me down there. <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.